salvation comes to me. That is the most beautiful person in the world, and I love him, and I cling to him with my whole heart, and no one and nothing in the whole world is as important as that person. You cannot say that by yourself in the strength of a sinful heart. That's the problem that leads Isaiah to say up front, who has believed my report? It will be a terrible, 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 terrible thing on Judgment Day to find out that the wisdom of this world is in fact foolishness with God. And that His criteria for judging His servant will stand in judgment over your criteria for evaluating His servant. And if you dare to look God, the righteous judge of all the earth, in the eye and say, Yes, I knew about your son Jesus but I thought he was ugly, I thought he wasn't worth associating with, and I didn't think he was very important. Do you think it will go well for you? No, that is sin in its most pure and most extreme expression. To look on the lovely Son of God and say, crucify. And it's no different whether you're there at the cross in person or hearing the gospel preached, rejecting him there at Golgotha, or rejecting him here in Sunnyvale, it's the same sin. It's a terrible. So what's the solution? How can sinful men and women come to say, yes, that servant is the arm of Yahweh? <coughs> Well, the answer is back in verse 1. What's the key word there in verse 1? Notice Isaiah doesn't say, explain. Isaiah doesn't think the problem is just an intellectual problem. If I just get a few hours alone with them and a piece of paper and a pen, I'll be able to explain it. And he doesn't say, describe the work. Illustrated. It's not that someone has the wrong type of learning style. They learn by seeing, whereas other people learn by hearing, that sort of thing. That, that may be true, but that's not the problem here. The problem is so big and so bad that the only solution is for the Lord himself to reveal to you the truth. That this suffering servant is also Yahweh's arm has to be revealed. And the good news is, it has been revealed. That's why we have a Bible. So that we don't look at the outward facts and circumstances of the history of Jesus' life and say, well, we can clearly conclude from the fact that he suffered so much and people hated him so much that he was just a meaningless criminal. That's what you and I would do if we weighed up all the evidence and all the facts of history. But when God comes to us speaking in Holy Scripture, preaching to us about His Son and saying, look, by divine revelation I am saying, that man is my Son and my servant. Believe, and you will understand. Don't try to understand and then believe. Don't try to take all the evidence of Jesus' life and weigh it in your own little mind and say, well, yeah, now I can see it's quite a reasonable conclusion that, that Jesus is Yahweh's arm. That won't work. But if you accept God's word that that man is his son and his servant, it will all be clear and you'll be able to see a new glory in those sufferings. You'll be able to see a new dignity in the body that hung on that tree. You'll be able to see new meaning in every aspect, in every event, in every instance in Jesus' life. You'll be able to look with eyes of faith at a man hanging on a tree and dying and say, that man is the one through whom Yahweh has brought me eternal life. And then I would only add to that, that it's not enough for it to be in the Bible. Now the Bible is enough, it's all you need. But it's not enough that that truth stay there in the Bible, on the pages of the Bible in your lap. God has to reveal it to you. He has to change you. He has to open your heart. That has to happen or else you'll never be able to say, 
with Isaiah that this man is Yahweh's Lord. So where does that leave us? Well, let me first address those who are unbelievers. It means that you need to get serious about asking the Lord to show you who Jesus really is. You little children who haven't publicly professed Christ, Until you stand up at the front of our church here, if you're still attending this church at that time, I'd ask you to spend every day praying. Don't spend all 24 hours doing this, but pray every day that the Lord will equip you to publicly profess your faith in Jesus Christ. That He will reveal to you what you need to know in order to say, He is Lord. Because He doesn't reveal that to everyone in His providence. Not everyone is able to say that. And it will be the best blessing of your life if He works in your heart to fit you and equip you and form you so that one day you'll be able to stand up here and say, that suffering servant is my word. Others here are attending and, and, and not believers. Very often that's the case in our congregation. We're thankful that you're here. Our prayer is that the Lord will reveal Himself to you in this way. We ask that that would be your prayer as well. And then for you who are believers, it's one of my, I think, concerns about a congregation that knows the Bible well and, you know, is stable and steady in so many ways that the danger in our church is not that we would, you know, fall apart at the seams because we're just disorganized and we never come to church. I mean, this is a steady, stable congregation. We're thankful for that. But the danger that presents is that you and I would lose our ability to see the beauty of the Lord Jesus. Isn't that true? That you and I would, over time, gradually become more like the people who said, no, take him away and crucify him, and less like the people who wept at his feet and anointed him for his Do you love him? Do you love the person that Isaiah is describing in this passage? I think it would be a fitting prayer for all of us to ask the Lord to reveal more and more and more to our hearts daily that that man who's hung on that cross is Yahweh's arm, the mighty king who's brought salvation. And the more you grasp that, the more you understand that incredible way, by God's grace, the more you will love the one who brought you salvation in that gospel. <coughs> Father in heaven, we are humbled by the fact that you have declared and preached to us about your Son. We are humbled by the fact that we have so often sinfully and negligently responded by refusing to love Him, neglecting to cultivate our love for Him, or despising Him altogether. Lord, we pray that You'll pardon that specific sin of not loving the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask that by Your Spirit at work in our hearts, You will make us to love Him more. And we ask that our great plea to the world around us would be to recognize in this man the servant of the Lord, the one through whom the Lord brings salvation. We pray that they will love Him too. We ask this in Jesus' name. Turning to a hymn.